Hi, welcome back. This is a very quick tutorial on how to use my recent procedural blood vessel asset that I've released on Gumroad. So after you open the file, you find the 3D scene together with the procedural control options on the right. I've also left open the geometry node tree uh, as some of the controls will require working on the nodes directly. More on that in a second. So the model is very similar to the procedural optical fiber model I recently released in that everything is built off Bezier curves. So in order to achieve whatever shape or blood vessel that you want, all you have to do is tab into edit mode and use the spline controlled handles to either move the blood vessel around or extrude to create new parts of the blood vessel to achieve the shape that you're looking for. The scene is lit globally with an HDRI for global illumination, as well as a single aerial light from the side. So this is the same lighting setup that I used for the video that you saw at the start. Let's have a look at the basic controls. Length resolution controls the number of points along the Bezier curves and dictates how smooth the blood vessel is. Similarly, radial resolution controls how many points there are along the cross section of the blood vessel. So again, the higher the values there are for each of these, uh, the more smooth or high resolution you have on the geometry. Radial slice point allows you to control how much you peel the blood vessel open by to show what's happening inside. So if I have the radial slice point set to 1, that fully seals off the blood vessel. And lowering the value to something below 1 allows you to increasingly show more of the inside. The cutaway start and end values allow you to slice open the blood vessel at different points. Changing these values allow you to shift the slice front uh, of all the different blood vessel layers all together at once. By default, the layers have individual offsets from the start and end value that you've set. We'll come to that in a second as part of the, the geometry nodes modifiers. The inner radius simply controls the radius of the innermost layer, i.e. here the endothelial layer. And so making this value smaller or larger allows you to make the entire blood vessel smaller or larger. The model also comes with some default blood content elements, which you can toggle on and off with the show blood tick box. This will allow you to show the contents of the blood, which are currently held in a collection called blood content, which you can see in the outliner, which contains models for platelets, red blood cells, and white blood cells, which all currently sit at the origin. The controls underneath, element scale, density, and so forth, allow you to control these blood elements, which are useful for creating animations and also for showing them in general. Element scale simply allows you to control the size of these components. Element density, as the name suggests, allow you to control how many of these elements lie along the Bezier curve inside the blood vessel. Element translation allows you to move all of these elements together along the Bezier curve. Together with the element rotation, these two are great for animations to allow for videos of the blood components flowing. Finally, displacement scale basically dictates how far from the Bezier curve each of these elements are displaced. With the displacement set to zero, all of the blood components will lie along the Bezier curve, and increasing this value will push them further normal to the Bezier curve. Depending on the size of the blood vessel that you've chosen by the inner radius, you will need to change the value of the displacement scale to make sure that all of the elements still lie inside the blood vessel. Besides these basic controls, you can also control certain aspects of individual layers of the blood vessel, uh, as well as remove or add layers. For this, we need to take a look at the geometry node setup. So in the setup, you'll find that there are two branches. The top branch is responsible for distributing the content of the blood, the red blood cells and so forth, as well as allowing for all of the controls like scale and translation. And underneath, we have a branch that creates all of the individual layers. There are currently six node groups, uh, each of which are responsible for building a specific layer of the blood vessel from which you can apply layer-specific controls. If we zoom in and have a look, the start offset and end offset allows you to control or add additional offset values to each layer from the cutaway start and end values that you've dictated for the entire model. If I set start and end offsets for all of the layers to zero, all of the layers will have the exact same start and end slice points, like so, 
and will lie flush with each other. And so having this additional control for offsets allows you to make the layers have a different starting point and end point and allow you to view them separately, which might be useful for certain illustrations. The thickness of each layer is controlled individually again on a layer basis using the layer thickness control. If, for example, I take the internal membrane and I increase the layer thickness from 0.005 to something bigger, like say 0.02, you'll find that this layer will increase in thickness, but also notice that the subsequent layers will accommodate for that increased thickness and make sure that they still track with the other layers. Finally, there is a unique material applied to each of these layers, which is controlled by the material option at the bottom of each of these groups. Removing or adding layers can also be performed by simply adding or removing these layer builder groups. However, this should be done with caution. Each layer builder currently takes a radius value from the preceding group so that it knows what radius to use for this next layer. This is currently done by taking the outer radius output of one group uh, and plugging it into the radius input for the next. Let's say I want to remove the internal membrane. I can mute this to do that. And you can see that makes uh, the results slightly weird in that all of the subsequent outer layers now have the incorrect radius value. That is because the next layer, the tunica media, is not receiving an appropriate radius value from the preceding layer. So to make this work, Having muted the internal membrane, I'll need to take the output from the sub-endothelial layer and directly connect that to the radius of the tunica media. Now everything works fine again. The same is true if I want to add a new layer. I can duplicate, say, the last node, the tunica external node, to create a new layer. I would plug input values from the group input node for everything except for the start offset, end offset, and so forth. Again, making sure to connect the outer radius from that previous group into the radius input for that new layer and then you would connect the geometry output and plug it into the join geometry and that's basically it as always please leave a like and a comment if this was useful subscribe for more tutorials like this and i will see you all next time bye bye for now